In this video, I'm going to discuss about five flaws in authentication mechanisms that you as a bug bounty hunter should look for. First and foremost, uh, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Chris. I work in cybersecurity and on this channel, I make a lot of uh, cybersecurity videos. So if you're into that, subscribe and ring the bell to get notified uh, of all my new videos. And if you want to become a uh, penetration tester yourself and need one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out the description of this video and uh, get in touch with me. All right. Now, the inspiration uh, for this uh, video came from the feed stuttered uh, amazing book. So the feed stuttered. I want to make sure uh, that I clearly pronounce his name. So uh, from the feed stuttered uh, amazing book, which is called uh, the Web Application Hacker's Handbook, the second edition from, yes, 2011, but it's still relevant in which he actually discusses uh, about uh, a dozen ways uh, to test authentication mechanisms. Now, I'm only going to highlight five of them here. So uh, what I suggest is for you to study these five and the remaining ones uh, in more depth in the book yourself. Uh, you've got a link to uh, the book in the description. So number one is bad passwords. Now, more often than not, I can see web apps with low quality controls when it comes to user passwords. And what do I mean by that? Well, for example, they don't control for a password length and some can even allow for blank passwords. Come on, guys, this is 20 freaking 19. Also, uh, many web apps <laughs> allow for common dictionary words uh, as passwords or passwords which are the same as the username. Uh, and all of these examples make it much, much easier for attackers to gain unauthorized access to, to users' accounts. Now, practical tip for you as a bug bounty hunter. Investigate user account creation and uh, determine the quality standard for uh, their password implementation and see if you can find flaws, uh, password flaws like uh, the ones that I just uh, mentioned. Number two, brute forceable logins. When there's low to no enforcing of rules for password quality, like I mentioned previously, uh, this basically makes it uh, like a breeze for attackers to uh, quickly brute force and compromise users' accounts. Now, for example, if the login functionality allows for six, yes, six letter passwords, an attacker with solid hardware resources, um, and that's not something like really super hard achievable these days so someone with uh, like maybe decent not necessarily solid hardware resources uh, could brute force one of these passwords in a matter of minutes or even faster now guys uh, i've started a collection of uh, hackers wearables uh, and i've got a few designs already up for grabs now i'm working on new designs as we speak not only for apparel but also for phone cases and other accessories and stuff like that. So this is a cool way for you to actually support the channel if you dig any of these uh, designs. So link in the description to, to my collection. Number three, verbose failure messages. Now, a solid login functionality should reveal no insightful information when user input actually leads to error messages. Like, for example, when you log into a web account, so in, when you log into your account in a web application with an incorrect password and you get incorrect password, and then you try to log in to the same web app with the username admin and a bad password, and you get the message user does not exist. Now, this is a classic case of information disclosure that can allow a potential attacker to actually gain further insight about the app with the ultimate purpose uh, of mounting a very targeted attack. Now, as a bug bounty hunter, you should immediately recognize this flaw and signal it to the bug bounty program. Now, comment down below and let me know if you, as a simple user of a web application, have seen any of uh, these flaws that I mentioned so far. Okay, now moving on to number four, which is vulnerable transmission of credentials. 
Now, this is another classic one. So when credentials are sent insecurely via HTTP, they are highly prone to being intercepted by unauthorized parties. Now, even if they're encrypted using some sort of an algorithm, uh, attackers could identify the algorithm. And if that algorithm is weak uh, or the password is weak, compromise is actually imminent. Now, also really important, uh, if login happens, so even in the case of the fact that the login happens via HTTPS, now there are web apps that store credentials in cookies. <laughs> yeah, so be amazed. Some developers, for who knows why, still do that. And uh, there's also the situation when the login form loads in HTTP, but it is submitted via HTTPS. And this actually makes the app vulnerable to MITM or uh, man in the middle attacks. Okay, fellas, now check out my Python basics course that will teach you the fundamentals of Python, which will greatly help you in bug hunting and also in penetration testing. There's a discount link in the description of this video. Now moving on to number five, password change functionality. Now, first and foremost, do not confuse the password change functionality with the forgotten password functionality. They are not one and the same thing. And the feeds as a book gives appropriate attention to both. So I'm only gonna talk about the password change functionality here. Now, I know it sounds counterintuitive, uh, but there are web apps that enable this function, so the password change functionality, without the user having been authenticated. It's crazy. So, uh, a weak password change feature, so when you are testing a, a password change feature or functionality, a weak password change feature will not have an existing password field so you will not see the existing password field where they actually ask you to input your current password uh, a weak password change functionality or feature will allow for brute forcing of this existing password field so it it will actually allow you to have multiple attempts into trying to guess that is simply brute forcing the existing password field and also a weak password change feature will actually throw verbose error messages when a bad input is provided. Thus, it will uh, probably provide more input to an attacker who wants to actually understand how uh, the framework behind the functionality is actually working. So if password change is available only after authentication, so this is another example. So far, we've talked about the password change which is only which is also available without authentication. But if the password change functionality is available only after authentication, uh, you as a bug bounty hunter might uh, still investigate these uh, three flaws that I just highlighted. So additionally, even in the case of uh, authenticated users, the password change functionality can transmit the username. So even if you're authenticated and you don't see the username uh, on the screen, uh, the password change functionality can transmit the username via a hidden field. And as you might know, as a bug bounty hunter, this is often easily modifiable via a proxy. You might want to check out this video appearing in the info card right now. Uh, if you're just getting started in information security and you're confused on how to go about it. Also, you might want to join this uh, amazing community of cybersecurity geeks that I created on Discord. So you can look for the server uh, link in the description of this video. And fellas, please help me grow this channel by sharing this video around so that YouTube starts uh, suggesting my content to more cybersec people. Until next time, Thank you for watching.